Recording in progress. Hello, Matthew. Good day. Hi. Um, so we'll just wait probably till uh, final to Eastern time or a couple more minutes. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's panel. Good morning to people in Eastern North America. Good afternoon to everybody in Nigeria or anywhere else. Um, today's panel, we're, or sorry, paper presentation is titled The Management of Print and Electronic Collections and the Application of Linked Data Technologies in University Libraries. It's based on a paper by Grace Tamilolu Ikenna and Rakamala Srenu. And Grace is the one giving the presentation today. And Grace is a certified librarian of Nigeria and a PhD researcher at the Department of Library, Archival, and Information Studies, the Universities of, sorry, University of Ibidan, Nigeria. And she holds a bachelor degree 
and a master's degree in library and information studies and archival records and information management as well. Uh, so without further ado, um, take it away, Grace. Grace, are you there? Um, you may need to unmute yourself, unmute your camera and unmute your microphone. All right, thank you. There you are. Much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Elizabeth. I'm glad to be on the platform this afternoon. It's afternoon here. I appreciate the planning committee for the uh, package so far. And I want to believe that the session will move smoothly this afternoon. Yeah, thank you. My name still remains Grace Temilolu Ikena. I'm a PhD uh, researcher at the Department of uh, Library and Information Science at the University of Ibadan, Nigeria. Yeah, I'm going to be you know, talking to Ross about the management. Let me share my screen first, please. Yeah, we'll be discussing on the management of print and electronic collections and the application of linked data technologies in university libraries. And um, just to give us a background of what we'll be looking at in, in this discussion, we look at library, a general um, overview of library. The library is essential center for academic setting we all know that, and it, uh, it's a real education can be achieved through the library. And we look at uh, the different kinds of libraries that we have everywhere. We have public libraries, uh, state libraries, we have um, uh, special libraries, but particularly we'll be looking at academic libraries, which is the, the university library. In, and university libraries with you know sub colleges uh, and the academic libraries so let me say that the university library is a library or a group of libraries that is purposefully built and maintained by university to meet the needs of the students members of the academia generally and we look at the collections in the university library. What are the available uh, collections in the university library? What are their prints or their electronic collections? Uh, the, the, the main goal of the university library is to make the resources in, this, uh, in their collections available to researchers, to students, to faculty members, and in many cases, the general public. And to help them do so, libraries would uh, devote their time in managing their resources, um, managing their collections, generally. And uh, how do we mean by that? We have prints, we have uh, books, we have manuscripts, we have films, uh, microfilms, um, uh, we have uh, audiovisual materials, all of these, you know, make up the collection development in libraries. Uh, before we go further, I we want to say that it has been observed that in the West uh, uh, African states, particularly in Nigeria here, and in some other uh, Southern African region of the India, uh, we say that the adoption of uh, linked data technologies in libraries is at a very slow pace and this is a problem that we can look at and how we'll be able to manage our collections in the library with the use of um, 
link data technology. Uh, I want to look at the collections in those libraries, the print collections. Where are they? We have books, we have archival materials, we have periodicals, we have institutional publications, government publications, we have the institutional repository collections, and um, the miscellaneous collections as well. So we, we keep all kinds of print collections in the university, li the university library, we are, uh, where we you know, can easily access and used to serve our clients. Then we have the electronic collections. Electronic collections of various formats. Uh, they, are in, um, in, they are electronic versions of the printed books that can be accessed anywhere, anytime with the help of the internet. These are e-books. And uh, there are different categories of e-books. We have e, 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 e TCs, e dissertation, for example. And then we have different kinds of databases that uh, collect e-books. Uh, let me mention a few uh, databases with e-books, which is the Agora, Inari, Ibrari, Springer, Web of Science, Wari, JSTOR, uh, Adi, New England Journal of Medicine, Royal Society Journal Collections, Bookbone, African Journal Online. These are few uh, databases with e-books, just to mention, but a few of them. Then we want to look at uh, further, we want to look at more of e-resources in university libraries. We have journals, e-journals now, and then digitized and born digitized documents, then digital images, we have microfilms, streaming videos, we have audio books, we have slides and e-databases. So we, we, we can see that uh, digitized materials also form part of our uh, electronic resources collection in the university libraries. Then we want to look at databases in support of our collection. We mentioned earlier that we have some e-resources uh, e-databases or internet-based e-resources are uh, electronic versions of those printed materials that we house in the library. And they can be accessed anytime, anywhere with the help of the internet. So, what are the importance of building our collections generally in the university library? One, we say we use them to provide resources necessary for research in the fields of special interest to the university community. With the aid of the university teachers, the collections in the library can be used to keep abreast of the development in various fields of knowledge and then to provide library facilities and services, the collection development uh, in those libraries are uh, used as a successful tool for formal programs on, and instructions. Then it opened doors to the worldwide world of books that lie beyond the borders of one field, one's own field of specialization. To bring the books, students and scholars together, collection development help you to do this it helps us to achieve that. It brings books, both books, scholars, and students together under the condition which encourage reading for pleasure, for personal growth, and for sharpening intellectual curiosity. Then, collection development. What then do we use as uh, a tool for managing our collection? The, development, the collection development policy particularly is useful tool for the development of our collection in the university libraries. Then we look at uh, what does the policy say about building your collection in the library. The user analysis, who uses the books or the, the collections, the selection process that we 
embark upon in building the collections, the acquisition policies in place, the resource sharing, and the weeding, the weeding process, and then the collection evolution. We said collection development policy is a document, it's a written statement, usually it's a uh, uh, is intended to define the objectives of the current institution of the library uh, and it's used for building the collection of the university library. So it is key in managing our collection. It is germane in providing um, uh, in, in the adoption of linked data in the libraries. Uh, that is the adoption of linked data technologies in libraries. So the policy is a very vital tool for building a collection. So let me say that this collection development policy diagram here has been self-developed by Rachamala and uh, Greece in 2022. Then the collection development policy, what is the value of, of the collection development policy? The role of collection development policy in managing both print and electronic collection in university libraries. Here we have that, yeah, it is used as determining the best method of acquisition of library resources. So what does its policy say when you're acquiring e-journals or e-resources? What does your policy say in, uh, in selection of um, uh, print collections now? So you have to look at that. That is, a way, that is where the role of the collection development policy comes in. It guides you uh, as a librarian or uh, as, uh, as, a, as a management staff in the library, you want to build a collection. The collection policy, the development policy actually guides you in determining the best method of acquisition for your library resources. Then we say it's, it's, it serves as a standard for selection and weeding out of materials. After many years of usage, of course, some materials get depreciated and uh, worn out, and you want to weed. So over time, we we'll have to look at the policy. What does the policy state as regards weeding? So you look at that and follow accordingly. So uh, collection development policy also facilitates cooperative programs like interlibrary loan resources sharing and networking. This is useful for cooperative decision making with other libraries or within a library consortia. The policy is also useful in the description of information resources which needs to be acquired. We mentioned that earlier and it helps in the replacement of worn out uh, lost materials. It contributes to operational efficiency in terms of routine decisions. Essentially, uh, the collection development policy acts as a rational guide for budget allocation for collection and application of linked data technologies. So, what is linked data? How can linked data be applied, uh, the linked data technology be applied in university libraries? Let us just consider briefly the concept of linked data. Linked data, as the name indicates, is a data model that identifies, describes, links, and relates structured data elements, analogous to the way relational database system functions, albeit the fact that the former operates at a well scale. Overall, the purpose of linked data is facilitating the usability, cross-linking, integration, and sharing of data. That assertion has been uh, stated by Brett and others in 2012. We said some examples of linked data. A very good example of large link open data sets includes the Wikipedia and Wikidata. It's a 
suite of semantic web standards developed by the World Wide Web Consortia. This standard creates a structure for making simple statements about resources so that machines can interpret relationships. How does linked data really work? This simple example will help us understand how linked data conveys concepts and connections. For example, for instance, we say on website A, we can present the entity of Justin and the fact that he knows Mary. And on website B, we can provide all information about Mary and on website C, we can find further information about Mary's place of birth. That is the essence of using the Wikidata. Now, the linked data infrastructure is ideal in university libraries, as patrons need to access a wide range of resources for research and for learning. We take another example with cataloging. Cataloging uh, with cataloging and exposure driven by linked data technology. The value of discovery is increased exponentially with maximum information coming from one and easy search. Users need to focus energy on figuring out how to conduct their searches while limited to specific phrases, keywords, and Boolean modifiers. So with the advent of ever-growing wealth of online offline resources, Lead data helps students overcome one of the major challenges they face in information filtering. The web of relevant linked sources immediately provides the context and balance needed to effectively evaluate the quality of such results. And at the same time, it opens the door to new possible unexpected resources that can enrich the patron's experience. In applying, sorry, in applying the linked data in the university libraries, what are the benefits derived? Before we go to the benefits, let me mention that in application of linked data, if last stated that while traditional library metadata is based on a variety of documents, based uh, on a document-based model. Linked data uses a dynamic database models based on linked simple tree paths. That is the RDF statement, describing resources, that is books, persons, corporate bodies, and places. The subject and the predicate of triple statements must be URIs, but the object can either be in a literal value or a URI, and more recently, RDF. And one has also stated that it introduces the RI, uh, the IRR. Benefits of linked data in libraries. Linked data library, application of linked data in libraries uh, emphasize that the resources can be described in collaboration with other libraries and linked to other data contributed by communities or individuals in other places. So you could collaborate with other libraries in you know, getting information. You are in library A and you need information in library B. If you have a synergy between the two libraries. If you are in a cooperative, um, or you, are in, you belong to a consortia, of course, you'll be able to amend the collection in library B. Let's use uh, cataloging OPAC, for example, as uh, as, a, as as an example to to link data in other libraries. I am in Nigeria. I have information in your library down there in India. How do I get to know what you have in your stock as a librarian or as a researcher that comes to the library and wants information? I can access your OPAC, irrespective of 
distance or location. I'm here. I could just go online and search your OPAC to see what you have in your collections. If I get through your OPAC and I am able to find what I'm in search for, yes, I can request for it. Or I can, you know, depending on what policy you're operating, I could also access the information right here. I don't have to travel down to South Africa or India to get raw material as long as I have in access to your OPAC. So link data builds on the defining feature of the, the web. The browsable links spanning a seamless information space. Link data creates an opportunity for libraries to improve the value proposition of describing their assets. Link data technology can help libraries improve their internal data curation processes and maintain better links between, for instance, digitized objects and their description. Link data can be a first step towards a cloud-based approach to managing cultural information, one which could be more cost-effective than standalone systems in institutions. This approach can make it possible for smaller institutions or individual projects to make themselves more visible and connected while reducing infrastructure costs. Yeah, I may not have the ability to travel far, but I could assess whatever you have in your library in America. Take for example again that which we talk about in terms of getting access to e-resources. With your e-resources collection in the Library of Congress, I could you know, collaborate with you and get more information about my area of interest. More benefits of link data application university libraries. With the link data, open data libraries can increase their presence on the web where most information seekers may be found. The focus on identifiers allow description to be tailored to specific communities such as museums, archives, galleries, audiovisual archives also. And then by using globally unique identifiers to designate works places, people, events, subjects, and other objects of concepts of interest, libraries allow resources to be cited across a broad range of data sources and thus make their metadata description more richly accessible. So the benefits to patrons and libraries will also have a direct impact on library professionals. By using linked, linked open data, libraries will create an open global pool of shared data that can be used and reused to describe resources with a limited amount of redundant effort compared with the current cataloging process. So what then are the challenges uh, faced with collection development in libraries and the application of linked data technologies in university libraries? We identified that the policy is germane. It's a key factor to collection development and link data application in libraries. The policy applies to collection development and link data technology application in libraries. Sorry. This requires user orientation of new technology and application and the use of link data. If I have a robot and I need to use the robot to access the collection in your library, if I don't know how to use the robot, then I may not be able to have access to the linked data collections in your library. So the, the, the user needs to be orientated on the use of those technologies. Not just uh, the robot example, we have so many other uh, technological tools that could be used in accessing information in the library. So the library user needs orientation, both staff, faculty members, and uh, students. They need orientation in the use of those technologies in libraries. Then we mentioned that staff training and development is a challenge. Yeah, the staff needs to be well 
trained in the use of those technologies. If I have a scanner and I cannot use the scanner to digitize collection in the university library, how then can readers in other spheres access those information? If I have e-resources in my library, and I, as a librarian, I could not access those resources, how then could that assist a user in retrieving information, relevant information for research, for learning, for personal development? So we, we say that, yes, staff training is important. Staff training and development is germane to the use of uh, the, the adoption of uh, uh, linked data technologies in the library. Then weeding. Weeding is also a problem. If you talk about physical weeding, the physical collection, you can easily retrieve those worn out books from the shelf. How about the electronic collection? Are you able to retrieve and weed out from your system those e-resources or e-collections that are not in need in your particular library? So these are challenges in the use of uh, those uh, tools. Then we'll talk about collection evaluation. Well, over time, you need to evaluate your collection. How frequently are they being used or accessed? both for prints and for electronic resources. Your electronic collections, of course, will have more frequency of use even than the prints. So you need to look at how, uh, you know, to provide necessary print collection and uh, electronic collections for your users. That is why uh, collection evaluation is key. More challenges now. We talk about in the inadequate infrastructural facilities. You don't have a good space to use your library. Of course, you need space. You need a, a serene environment. We need a, a structured building in place for you to be able to operate your library operations. Then, in some parts of the world, especially developing countries, the interruption of power supply uh, or power failure is, is also a challenge. This doesn't operate in other advanced nations of the world, but in some other countries, yes, it's still a problem where you have uh, uh, poor uh, electricity and power failure. Then we talk about low speed of the internet, problem of bandwidth and networking. Uh, it's also a problem to assess if you have your collections but you have problems with the internet, how are you able to assess those collections? If you have um, good resources on your wiki data, how are you able to retrieve them without a good speed of internet? The use of uh, those uh, linked data uh, technologies will be limited. The insufficient assistance by library staff. The library staff on their own part, they need to assist the reader, they need to assist the faculty members in getting their relevant information from the library. In conclusion, we say university libraries, especially in West African region and in Southern India regions, and by extension, university libraries everywhere, have to take the initiative to manage their collections, whether in print or in electronic format, and to provide the right information to the right user at the right time. In doing so, their collection development policy has to be developed and fully implemented to manage both the print collections and electronic collections. On the other hand, university libraries should adopt the necessary tools, infrastructures, and resources for the application of linked data technologies in rendering their services. 
no doubt the application of link data technologies in university libraries will be helpful for acquiring print and electronic collections so that they can achieve their target of providing best possible services and information to their users. So we recommend a few things to university libraries everywhere, irrespective of their region or location, could adopt link data technology application for their collection development. And then the electronic and print collection in university libraries could be made easily accessible to restrictive users with the right collection development policy in place and the application of link data technologies. University libraries could belong to a consortia that already implemented link data technologies and practice with the right policy, thereby saving costs to acquire relevant print and electronic collections for their users. University libraries in developing countries should adopt link data technology application in their operation and for managing their collection. So, thank you. The references are listed below. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you once again. Great. Uh, thank you, Grace. Uh, we have a hand raised from R. Um, just if you don't mind taking questions now. Um, Par, you can unmute yourself and ask if you. Yeah, any question? Let me see. Um. Um, Par, you're still muted. Yeah. Oh, they were. I, I think I, I got a question from the shield. Will you share the slides either in the chat or on shield? Okay, let me see. I believe that um, Rocky would like to answer that. So. No, I just no, said I that you're sharing, sharing it live. It live. Um, um, so there will be an opportunity um, to post your slides in the sketch, and that's where I would expect to see them after the session. The session is also being recorded and will be posted on YouTube. Okay. So good. Any other questions from anybody? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Grace, for your presentation. Mm -hmm. Any other question in the house? I just saw a note in the Q&A that chat is disabled. Um, if you want to ask a question, you can put it in the Q&A. Um, apologies for that. Um, and the audio is disabled for everyone unless we enable your audio. Hello? What did you say? Okay. Well, I don't see any other questions. Lots of thank yous for a great presentation. So thank you, Grace. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll post this in the YouTube channel um, in the next couple of days. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.